so welcome. My name is Michelle Irvin. I'm a technical writer with Google Cloud. Uh, so I write end user documentation for different cloud products that we have. Um, my background is a little diverse. My undergrad is in physics, um, and I have a master's in rhetoric and communication design. And then I've been working in software for over 10 years as a technical communicator. So I write the end user documentation for cloud, but I've also been driving some research with a program called the DORA Research Program. And my focus is on documentation. And today we're here to talk about the relationship we've found between documentation and security practices. Documentation is one of those fundamental parts of software development. Um, at the same time, it can be really hard to see the impact that it has. When you write a piece of documentation, you write some content or you update something, you maintain it, um, you don't get feedback on that right away. The impact that this has uh, scales. It scales out into your team, your organization, even your entire industry, especially if we're looking at open source content. Um, and it also scales over time, right? So you're not getting that direct feedback like you would for a test that you can see that it passes or code that compiles in front of you, right? Um, so what we've been able to do is we've been actually able to measure documentation quality and quantify the impacts that this quality has on different parts of your processes and systems. Um, and in terms of security, what we have found is that documentation quality drives security practices. So teams with higher documentation quality have better uh, implementation of security practices. And then also, we have impacts from these security pra practices that we've identified. And we've also found that documentation amplifies those impacts. Um, so I find this very exciting. Uh, so let's, let's dive in. Um, to talk about this, I'm first going to give you just an overview of the research program so that we all have an, an idea of what we're talking about. Um, and then I'll go th over exactly how we've measured documentation quality and then our different security practices. Uh, and then we get to the fun bit, which is looking at the impact and the relationship that these things have together. Um, and then before I wrap up, one of the great things about our research program is that we have been able to identify uh, and quantify these impacts, but we also have concrete findings around things that you can do to um, create quality documentation, so documentation practices. Um, and there's also, I'm going to say, lots more about security in, in the reports that we've published, so I'll let you dive into those um, yourself as well. So let's get started. The DORA Research Program, it's been running for about 10 years, uh, and it's survey-based. So we send out surveys, so I am not personally looking and vetting at any documentation um, as part of this research program. Um, and the research program is focused on the deployment, well, the development, deployment, and operation of software. So that whole ecosystem um, and processes and people involved in, in all of that. And metrics from the DORA program are often used as industry standard to be able to measure performance um, of your software delivery. So it's survey-based. As of 2023, we have over 36,000 respondents over the course of the whole research program. Um, and this research program is run out of Google Cloud. However, we are not studying Google Cloud. We are looking at, we are, we are getting responses from people across the entire industry. So uh, this, is a this is a picture from 2022. So we have respondents from all over the world big companies, small companies, lots of different contexts, which is really powerful because it also means that our findings are applicable, they're at a level that's applicable to all these different contexts as well. And when I say lot, that these respondents are from across the industry, it's because we're talking about software, but in reality, this also means that this is a, a diverse amounts of industries, right? Because we have all these respondents that are in organizations that are either government or retail, financial services, healthcare and pharmaceuticals, and yes, technology, right? So software is in all of these different sectors, and so these impacts are affecting organizations in all these different sectors as well. Um, and before we jump into documentation and security, I just want to touch on 
one of uh, the key findings that you'll hear about if you look into the DORA research program. So here we have our software delivery and operations performance. This is, this is um, a performance metric that uh, they identified over the course of the program, and we keep validating year over year. Um, and what we see is software delivery speed and stability. So we have two metrics that look at the speed, so how quickly are you getting um, code out the door, but also how frequently are you able to release in into production, and also stability. So what is your change fail rate? How many changes are making it out into prod? And for those changes, how quickly are you able to recover? Either push out, either roll back or push out a fix. And what we actually found was that these two things are not in opposition to each other. They work together. So teams that are actually deploying software faster are seeing more stability in their whole system as well. And this might seem a bit counterintuitive, but think about riding a bike, right? Like the, you, sometimes you need a bit of speed to get that stability. And if you think about a team that is able to deploy frequently to prod, when there's an issue in prod, they also have the infrastructure and know-how to be more nimble and to push out a, fi a fix faster. Um, so I wanted to touch on this so you have an idea of the type of content that we look at um, or the type of findings that we've, that we've found. Um, and also to just kind of plant that seed of things that might seem in opposition, we actually find that they're working well together. So let's look at how we've measured documentation and our security practices. First of all, the type of documentation that we're looking at specifically is internal documentation. So this is the content that you would be using as you go about your day, like your day-to-day -day work. Um, and this is the content that you would be writing either for your coworkers or other people working on your project um, or for even your future self when you come back to something that you've worked on in the past. Uh, so just a couple screenshots from open source projects of the type of documentation. So think about readme files, um, internal processes, things like that. And again, um, I have not gone through and scored people's documentation page by page. And we are also not only looking at words on the page. So when we ask about documentation quality in the survey, we are looking at documentation as a whole experience. So we have eight different attributes that we've used to assess doc quality. And these range from things that you might be familiar with, like organization and clarity, so think about words on the page, but also questions around, can you find it? Do you use it? Is it kept up to date? And all of these aspects we use to assess the entire documentation experience. So the way that this metric works is that each of these attributes, I've, I've listed them here, um, but this is not what's put on the survey. So each of these attributes has a statement that goes with it. And then there's a agree to disagree scale. Um, so we're able to take that, put numbers on it, and then express the response to this as a single number to be able to track the documentation quality. Um, I would encourage you, we've got all of the questions published on dora.dev. There's a URL right here. Um, so if you want to take a look at what uh, the respondents are actually responding to, uh, take a look at the questions there. Um, so we've got documentation as an entire experience, uh, and we've got one number to express it. We do a very similar thing for our different security practices. So in 2021, we looked at something that we're calling pervasive security. So uh, you might have heard terms like shift left. Uh, I've heard shift down and, and different things like that. But what we're really asking about is, is security incorporated throughout your development life cycle, right? Um, and so again, I would encourage you for these different concepts, go and take a look at the specific statements that are, that are being asked on the survey, because that can help color uh, and shape uh, how you understand the findings. Uh, and then in 2022, we took a look at software supply chain security, uh, specifically some of the salsa practices. Uh, and so these are the two main um, security practices that we're going to be looking at today. 
All right, so let's take a look at impact. We have looked at the entire research program, so we kind of have a sense of, of how this is done. We have a measure for documentation quality and security practices, and now we get to the fun bit, which is we get to toss these in to the larger system and see how it all works together. So this image is from 2021. This is the first year that we studied documentation, and it's a bit busy. Um, this is also published in the reports, but it's also available online at dora.dev. So please go take a look if you need to zoom in. Uh, but I want to give you a sense of just how many different things we look at in a given year, and also how complex these systems are, right? There's a lot of stuff going on, um, and they all have relationships with each other. And another thing I want to point out, uh, you may not be able to see it clearly, but security is um, one of the pink boxes in, in the set of three pink boxes near the top there. And we actually see security driving software delivery and operations performance. So when we are talking about the speed and stability, when you have pervasive security practices established, we actually see that as a benefit. It's driving and impacting in a positive way your ability to deliver software and to, your ability to have a stable um, software delivery as well. And again, I feel like this is something that is often talked about as in opposition to each other, right? Like security is this extra overhead um, that maybe slows down development. When it's done properly, it does not slow down development, right? When it's done improperly, like if you're catching, if you're only looking at security right before you push to prod, I bet that's gonna slow down <laughs> development. Um, and also when you, have the infrastructure to be able to roll back changes quickly, well, that mean, makes you a lot more nimble and able to address security concerns when, when you do find them. Um, so for anybody who's been able to really squint, uh, you'll see that documentation is not in this graph. So back in 2021, we were looking at all of this and putting our pieces together and trying to figure out where documentation quality might fit. Um, and I was thinking about the software delivery and operations performance. That's kind of a key metric that we focus on. But what we actually found was it, it does impact that positively, but it also impacts every single technical practice that we looked at. So absolutely security, it's driving security, but it's driving uh, test automation. It's driving observability and monitoring. It's, it's driving um, continuous delivery. We saw doc quality as foundational to all of these different elements, right? And remember, this isn't, these set of questions isn't about your security documentation specifically, right? This is one number that's capturing all of your documentation experience. This, so this is just a broad baseline of your internal documentation that is driving security practices. Um, and, this isn't just uh, a graph with different relationships, but remember, we are working with numbers. So th these are the numbers from 2021, but we see that teams, compared to teams with poor quality documentation, teams with high quality documentation are 3.8 times more likely to be implementing security practices, 2.5 times more likely to be fully leveraging the cloud, 2.4 times more likely to ex meet or exceed their reliability targets, and 3.5 times more likely to be implementing site reliability engineering practices. So this is, very, this is the same as the graph that we just saw, but just putting it in numbers. We see that documentation is foundational to all these different practices and is having a broad impact on, your, on all of these practices and also on your system. So teams with high quality internal documentation, I would argue, are building a different system than they would be building if they had poor quality documentation, right? Think about a team with no security experts on it. They would also be building a different system than one 
um, that they're building when they do have that security expertise, right? And documentation is one of those ways that that expertise is able to spread throughout the organization. Uh, so these numbers are from 2021. <clears throat> they're all published in the report uh, to give you an idea of, of that broad base that, uh, of impact that documentation has. But let's take a look specifically at security practices. So uh, teams with quality documentation, we saw this, 3.8 times more likely to implement uh, pervasive security practices. This is 2021. Um, and then what we saw as we continued similar uh, investigation in the subsequent years uh, is we just see this pattern repeating, right? So 1.7 times more likely to implement SALSA security practices. So this impact, it wasn't a one-off that we saw in 2021. We've seen this pattern repeat year over year that we've looked at documentation. Um, so this is all focused on internal documentation because of the setup of the research program, uh, this was the best thing to investigate. I also want to say that I do think that this is affirming for end user documentation as well, right? Like if you are producing a product that you need to have security features or you need your users to be using in a specific way, the quality of your end user documentation is also going to matter. So this could be the highlight of this talk and of the impacts. And in 2021, um, I was thrilled to see this. Like this is a very exciting, it still is a very exciting story, um, but there's more. So for this next effect, uh, we have to talk about interactions. So an interaction is when two th things interact together, they work together to um, affect a third thing. So an example for this would be water and sunshine, right? When they're in the right combination, then a plant grows and thrives. And if one is, is reduced, then the, the, grow, the plant is just not gonna reach the same potential. So here, instead of looking at a plant, we are looking at organizational performance. So that means we measure this in a similar way with different statements, looking at different attributes, and it includes things like um, customer satisfaction and revenue. And what we found was that when you have a technical practice in the presence of high quality documentation, the impact that that technical practice has on your organizational performance is amplified, right? So just like a plant, it starts to thrive. So let's take a look at a graph. This one is also a little busy, um, but we'll walk through it. Um, and I also want to say, we have published this in a blog post. Uh, in that post, we looked at the CI practice. So uh, we have put together the security graph for you today, so you are all the first to see this. And what we see is on the y-axis, so the vertical one here, um, this is your organizational performance. And on the x-axis, the horizontal one on the bottom, we see an increase in security practices. So here, this is the salsa, so supply chain security. And if we look at the set of the, the red, these are all simulations based on our data. So the red simulations at the bottom this is what happens when a team increases their software supply chain security practices. So we do see there is some impact on organizational performance. However, if we look at the set of green simulations, this is in the presence of high quality documentation, we see that same impact amplified. And we have numbers. So teams with low quality documentation, when they implement these practices, they see about a 37% impact on organizational performance when you go from no security practices to a high level of security practices. If you do this in an environment with high quality documentation, that same impact is 451%. So this is very much amplifying. Um, and I've got a link to the blog post here. It's called Documentation is Like Sunshine. And there we've published all of the numbers for the different technical practices that we looked at in 2022. And then uh, last year in 2023, 
we saw this pattern again repeat. So what's behind this impact? Because it's, it's really substantial. There's a couple things that we can talk about. One is maybe productivity, right? Teams are able to do their work faster when they have uh, high quality documentation. Um, but I also wanna point out uh, that the survey, the respondents are anonymous. So we're looking at kind of like points in time and very individual points too, right? So one response from one person within one organization. Um, so I think that this could be also mean a team with high quality documentation, that one person who has been able, or their team has been able to implement these practices, if they have high quality docs, it might be likely that, that, is, that it's more likely that more people in their organization have also implemented these practices, right? And that team is not a one-off or in isolation um, doing, doing the correct practices. Um, and also, we, we do talk about the spread throughout the organization, but this is also a spread throughout time, right? As people come and go, as different people join teams, even like moving around internally, even as you need to go back and follow a process that you'd established a couple months ago, right? When you have this stuff documented in a way that's useful, um, it just makes sure that, that all of these practices are a bit more stable over time. Another thing is that when we were looking at the impacts of quality documentation, we saw that it had a lot of impacts on lots of different technical practices, right? And security specifically is something that is really dependent on lots of different things, right? Like testing, observability, and monitoring. We talked about that deployment process. And so if you have high quality documentation, it's more likely that you have a lot of these other good practices established as well, right? So it kind of just feeds itself. It's, it kind of like lifts, lifts all the boats, right? Um, and then in addition to this, in 2023, we also found that quality documentation has a substantial increase in productivity, substantial increase in job satisfaction, and it causes a decrease in burnout. All right, so those impacts are really gratifying to see. They can be very motivational. And we remember, we also have findings around how to create quality documentation. Before we talk about that, I, I want to say, please, please do not walk out of this room <laughs> Or, or watch this video um, and get so motivated that you just want to write lots and lots and lots of documentation. <laughs> because we're not talking about the quantity of documentation, we're talking about the quality. And too much documentation, I think, can be just as bad as not enough, right? We want stuff that you can find, we want stuff that you can maintain. Another thing that we talk about um, in the technical communications world is really creating a culture of documentation, right? So this is something that you, can, that you can follow these practices and you can do. It's something that you and your team can do, but it's also something that you can champion across your organization. We talk up a lot about advocacy for security within an organization. There have been some fantastic talks um, uh, at, at this conference. There's also advocacy for documentation practices, right, and a documentation culture. Um, so the two things I wanna say about this in, in, as, uh, with security as your focus is people who are already championing technical communications and any technical writers that you have within your organization, these people are key people that you might want championing security practices, right? because they are the ones capturing this information and they might be able to raise their hand or pull you into spots where maybe security needs to be considered. Um, but also, you in turn, as security experts, can be championing this culture of documentation and championing people like technical writers who are doing this work in your organization because this work has a large impact on the security of your systems. All right, so let's take a look at some of these specific practices. And remember, this isn't just a list that I've put together, uh, but this is grounded in specific findings that we have from the research. So this first set is kind of focused on skills and resources, have training for technical communication. 
Um, we have a technical communication course that we run at Google um, for our software engineers and people in other technical roles. Um, and it's actually available externally as well. And one of the lines from it that I love is every engineer is also a writer. And so a reminder that this is a skill, writing is a skill, and it's one that can be developed and built. Um, guidelines for how to update the docs. Write it down, make it clear, and then people will help maintain this content. Make sure you've identified a style guide. Um, so you could have a style guide. Uh, there's, there's a handful out there. Um, and also guidelines about writing for a global audience, right? Like really identify who your audience is and, and figure out some tools like style guides to make your, your writing consistent. Um, so now we're getting into the work itself and kind of the structure of the work. Make sure that there are owners for documentation. Owners does not mean that they are the only ones who go in and work on this content, but they can be the ones kind of vetting changes and they, they make sure that there's responsibility uh, for making sure that this content is maintained. Um, at the same time, distribute the documentation work, right? So there shouldn't just be one owner <laughs> for all of your internal documentation. You need to be distributing this work. Some people might be better at it than others, but remember, it's a skill. We can build that skill. Um, and the information doesn't reside within only certain people, right? It's really distributed across your organization, so make sure that you're capturing it in that way. Um, also, people who uh, are not experts can be wonderful contributors to the documentation, right? Because they're the ones who have fresh eyes and can ask questions or, or find some pieces that are ambiguous or, skip, or, or steps that have been skipped. Um, and so even filing bugs on the documentation uh, is, is a big help. Incorporate docs in the software delivery life cycle. Make sure that you're identifying doc tasks and incorporating them within the rest of the work that you do. And then this last set uh, is kind of focused on what to document, first of all. So it's critical use cases. We found that teams that said that their critical use cases are documented um, report they have a much higher quality of, document of documentation. Um, and things like this, it sounds so simple to say, right? But then when you actually get to, uh, to the work, the work's complex, right? How do you figure out what those critical use cases are? How do you write it in a way that's actually clear, right? So, so this is where um, there's, there is work to be done here. Uh, and technical communicators can, can really help. Uh, okay, so this next one is my second favorite one. Remove stale content, remove old content. Teams that delete content see a higher quality uh, documentation. When I get started on a project, usually for end user docs, like the amount of content that I am deleting in order to make sure that, that, the, that the content is uh, understood and useful, it's a lot, right? Because it's a different audience. I'm also adding stuff, right? I'm asking questions and, and pointing out links and, and uh, figuring things out that sometimes the product teams and engineers had never even considered, right? Because they had never needed to step back and actually use this um, in the way that their users will need to. So remove stale content. This helps your documentation quality. And then this last one is my favorite one, and it's to value documentation work. So teams that reported that documentation work was recognized during performance reviews and promotions um, they also saw an impact on documentation quality, right? Remember, documentation work is engineering work, right? This isn't just copy and pasting. We're not rewriting the code base using English. This is a different interface that we're building, and that interface has an impact on the system that you're working with. All right, so to wrap up, if there are only three things that you take away from this talk, they should be that documentation has extensive and measurable impact on your security practices and on the larger systems that you're building. And we've done the hard work of putting numbers on this for you. The second thing is that there are concrete steps that you can take to improve your documentation quality. I would really encourage you, like, no progress, no matter how small, is, is wasted, right? Like there are 
definitely concrete steps you can take to start chipping away at this or but to create a bit, a bit of a cultural shift to improve your documentation quality. Um, and then as, thirdly, as part of your security work, right? documentation is, is engineering work, documentation is also security work. Champion a culture of documentation. So bring this information to your stakeholders, bring it to your team, and really recognize the specific work as a key element of your broader portfolio. Um, also, value the documentation and the technical writers and the other champions at your organization who work on this, on this content. Um, and then also for all of you, this is a list that I've just put together. Um, so there's, there's tons out there um, for, about technical communication. So I, I've thrown a couple links up here for you. Um, a lot of this is, is, comes from Google. We've got the link to our technical writing courses, our, our developer style guide, our documentation style guide. Um, we also run a program called Google Season of Docs, uh, which helps open source projects be able to fund uh, technical writing projects. Um, but there's, there's tons more out there, right? This is the tip of the iceberg. And the DORA research program, like we do not vet specific resources or look at specific tooling or anything like that, um, but there's, there's lots for you to dig into. Um, and, and here in the United States, uh, technical writing is also an undergraduate degree in a, lot of in a lot of universities and colleges, right? There are lots of people out there who are very knowledgeable in this field and who can also help amplify the impact that you have. And then for the DORA research program itself, please go explore the research. There's tons there. There's tons there about security beyond what we've talked about today. Um, it's all available on dora.dev. Um, and there's also a community of practice. So this is a really wonderful place where um, research and practitioners come together to be able to discuss the different topics that the research has uncovered. Um, and you are all very lucky because there are a few days left that the 2024 survey is still open. So if this feels like something that is applicable to your world, like you're involved in software at your, at your organization or developing um, or operating the software, please feel free to take the survey, but also share this link with your network or with people in your organization um, because the more data that we have from the more different contexts that we have, the more findings we'll be able to bring to you um, about security practices, uh, things like security practices and documentation. Um, all right, thank you very much. Uh, we'll go to questions, but I'll, I'll just leave the, the survey link up here. Thanks. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so uh, to just emphasize that documentation is also helping threat hunting is that is one of was one of those things yeah for sure so I'm not sure if we have specific findings around that but I completely agree with you right like this is one of the ways that that documentation is helping yeah no absolutely absolutely thank you very much for that Does anybody here work with a technical writer in your day-to-day -day job? No. That is the problem. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, especially for internal content. So um, at Google, we do have technical writers who work on internal content, but very often we are focused on that external like user guide, right? Yep, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Clarifying whether good documentation is like correlated or causing this even deeper drive. In yeah. Mind, I, I see all of those effects as being from like an earlier, more contingent cause of organizational buy-in through a strong security culture. 
Okay, I, I'm so glad you, you pointed that out. Um, so the question is about, um, is documentation quality and security, are they correlated? Are they, are they causing these effects? Um, or is there something else about the organization that's driving both of these things? So uh, those impacts are, are calculated using structural equation modeling. So it's not correlation, it's stronger than that, but it's also not causation, it's kind of in between. So what we say is that it's predictive. So that's why the language that we use, you can say predicts, you can also say drives or impacts. Um, but one, one thing that's interesting is that, um, so I say that documentation quality drives these security practices. We can actually debate which way that impact is, is occurring, right? Because think about a team um, and they realize they need better security practices as part of that work, they might step up their game in documentation, right? They might realize that that's an element of what they need to do to be able to scale out the security practices. Um, I really do think that it goes both ways and that it's fairly dynamic, right? If you think about a team that's writing down and capturing information in a, in a document, often that can really showcase like stuff that could be automated, right? Like things that are really painful to do manually that you're expecting people in your organization to do. And it can also be like really small, simple things. Like if you're documenting the different default settings that you should be changing to make it more secure, hey, go in and change those default settings so that by default, they're more secure, right? It can kind of uncover things like that as well. So they're kind of things that, um, the, the, the impact might, might go both ways, yeah. Um, and then another thing you mentioned, uh, like there might be a different cause that's affecting both of these things, right? Um, so we've, we've talked about this a little bit, and the term that we use is like, do these companies or do these teams just have their, their stuff together, right? Like, do they just recognize security practices are important, and they also independently recognize like documentation practices are important. Um, sure, maybe they do have their stuff together, and they've recognized that both of those things are important. That's great, right? You, you do need to be doing the work and you need to recognize that it's valuable. Um, I, but they're impacting each other, right? Like how else are you scaling out security expertise in your whole organization other than using documentation and, and other methods as well, right? It's not the only way to do this, but it's definitely a very powerful way to do this. Um, yeah, so thank you very much for that question. Pardon? A maturity scale, yeah, I've, I've heard that too. Like, oh, maybe these um, organizations are just more mature. Um, I'm not sure if we have a proxy for maturity, if, if you're talking about like age of the company. Uh, maturity, in sense of maturity in the sense of just having their stuff together. Right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But you could have like, if you think about a hackathon, right? Like a brand new project that people have scrapped together, quality docs, I, I'm sure, still matter. Even in an environment like that, right? It kind of clarifies your thinking and makes make sure that you've got different pieces together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the question is about um, the technical writers would be wonderful to have on your team, right? But often it's developers writing this content. Um, and then especially in the open source world, you get contributors and oftentimes they're also developers writing this content. Um, and then in addition to that, how uh, helpful are large language models to, Right, so could open source projects use uh, a tool like large language models to help write documentation? Thanks, I'm, I'm just repeating it for the, for the recording as well. Um, perfect, uh, so even internally, right? Like you don't all have access to tech writers, so often it is developers or people in other technical roles writing this content. Um, so 
uh, the findings from 2021, we saw those different things that impact doc quality, training, um, it, like steps for updating and maintaining the docs and all of that. Like those are things that you can put in place for the people who are helping to maintain documentation quality, right? Um, in the open source world, we actually do see doc quality mattering a lot in terms of adoption and use of open source projects. Um, and so this is something that, that contributors often invest in, right? Um, but you're also wondering if we can just get large language models to write this content. Oh, sorry, did I flip this? Um, I, I do think, so if you think about technical writing, and creating and maintaining these systems, uh, this documentation, there's lots of different steps involved, right? So I'm sure that there are ways that we can incorporate LLMs uh, in, in the different steps. At the same time, they're not just like repurposing other content, like you are creating something new for a new system. So it really needs to be accurate with the system that you're describing as well, right? So. Um, if you could auto-generate code that also comes with documentation, like sometimes when those things are a bit more coupled, maybe that might be a bit more accurate. By the way, this is, this is all my own personal um, opinion. Um, or maybe you can write a document and then use an LLM to help like clean it up to match a style guide or, or something like that, right? But you're always going to need to be uh, like ensuring that that content is matching and, co and covering the use cases that you're trying to capture as well, right? Um, because even figuring out what needs to be documented, right? That is a task in and of itself. Um, and so I would just make sure that you are keeping your eye on that quality so that you are maintaining trust and use of, of the documentation. Um, okay, we'll do one more question, and then if there are more questions, we can just take them inside. Go ahead. Um, so again, one point in time and, and one, one response. So we don't quite have that. We, d we did see that teams that do have access to a technical writer, they did report like a higher quality documentation. Very often, even if you have tech writers involved in this internal documentation world, they will be able to support and do some of this content, but a lot of the times it's also about scaling out support for the different um, developers and, and people in technical roles who also need to be helping write and maintain this content. We'll, take, we'll, we'll do more questions out, outside. Okay, thank you so much, everyone.